by Stainless Steel Sword versus Carpenter Steel Sword Test. And for this part of the test, I'm going to use a Burnley Dow Sword made out of 1060 carbon steel and and my uh, ninja sword stainless steel made out of 420 or 440 stainless steel. Let's see what it can do against the jug. See now a bit. Okay, stainless steel sword versus the jug. Let's see what happens. Plain cut. Thinly steel sword. Undamaged. Now, let's try the 5160 spring steel burning steel sword. Now, and this is carbon steel. I mean spring steel, by the way. Interesting. It cut it. Not only did it cut it, it split this in half. Okay. So so far they're even, one to one. Let's see what it can do against a slightly harder target. Two, two liter jug. Try stainless steel first. Okay. The top was taken off. I mean, it, it killed it a little bit, but the top off. We got a uh, two meter jug. Let's try this one. My cold steel two handed katana machete. Same length as that one, just the handle's longer. I use it with one hand. There we go. It's cut. Now, 
try these two little small ones. They're uh, mouthwash bottles. Let's see. Stainless steel sword. Stainless steel sword, quite didn't make it all the way through. I mean, a little bit more, would have got the job done. This time, I'm going to try the Dow sword. It did about the same as the spring as uh, stainless steel. Nope. So far. Stainless steel is body even with, with uh with carbon steel. And I think the reason why is so far is that the stainless steel sword has a very shallow, narrow blade. It's more like a uh, katana blade. The other two swords have a more thicker blade because they're for chopping wood and stuff like that. So, I guess further testing is going to be done and we'll see what it can do. Out. Now, see one more test. Let's see, we got a box. Let's just give it a chop test. See what it, how far it can chop. And just for fun, let's see what it can Okay, as you can see, stainless steel sword went all the way from the top, about to where that would be. This is about waist level right here on a person. So, while it's coming straight down, see, made a pretty good. Pretty good size cut. Taxes all the way through. That's about waist level. Burmese down sword on the other hand. Went all the way up from the top. Came all the way down there and that would be where my knee would be. Right here. Okay. And just for laughs, let's see what Cold steel can do. Put it back up. That's where the stainless steel sword did, and that's where the cold steel sword came in. That's way down here, Burmese Dow Sword. So, as you can see, side by side cutting. The stainless steel sword is about equal to a uh, carbon steel sword right now. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I just wanted to prove a point. That um, people say that, oh, well, you know, that stainless steel sword is a piece of junk. And that's, that's semi true. Now, in the long run, yeah, a stainless steel sword. It's going to bend, it's going to break eventually, over time. But that's if you're just using it continuously. Like, let's say you were fighting the undead. Yeah, this would give out on you eventually. I mean, eventually. This, this would probably last a long time, but you have to 
wipe it down every once in a while. It does have a uh, kind of a corrosion proof coating on it, because it comes like that. But, you know, as I said, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, if you are going to get a stainless steel sword, get something like this, you know. Don't get a katana, don't get, you know, something like that. Get a nice short sword that a one piece of, of stainless steel like this, and, you know, there's not, there's not much on here to go wrong. I mean, if you get a katana, usually right here in the handle, they have a little rat tang, and it only goes about right here. I mean, even on this carbon steel blade, with the um, wrapping ends, that's basically where the tang is, but right here. This, it's just one piece of metal. Now, I'm not saying that this is better, so don't go there. I'm just saying that, you know, keep it in perspective. I use this thing all the time for chopping weeds and stuff like that. As a weed chopper, yes. See all these bushes and stuff back here in the background? Stuff like that. Let me just zoom in. See all these bushes and crap like that? Yeah, it can chop this stuff. Tree branch, little tree branches. Yes. Something like this would do the job. And I only pay ten bucks for it. It'll, it does its job. I mean, it's a little lightweight, but it's good. This, um, carbon steel blade, this 1055, uh, two-handed katana, it's better, yes. It's better, but it costs a lot more. For the price of this, which I got this on sale, is only 20 bucks. But still, I mean, I can get two of these. And this isn't too bad of a blade. I mean, you know, it'll last you quite a while. And if it does then you can just bend it back. I mean, it's not going to really... It's not a big loss if, if you break this. But, I mean, if I was in the woods and I was using a survival weapon, probably I would go for this. My Burmese Dow Swords. Let me get out anyways. Oh, it's in the wagon. Or something like this, you know. Because there are carbon steel and they're very strong and stuff like that. But, you know, if I'm just backpacking or something like that, where I don't want to bring out something I have to constantly, you know, look after, I probably would bring just my little stainless steel sword. So, you know, getting back to the point. Carbon steel, stainless steel, they're about equal in cutting power. I mean, I'll have some more tests, some meat, some uh, chesting on some wood and stuff like that, just to show you the full extent of it, but basically, they're the same. The only real difference between carbon steel and stainless steel is that the stainless steel is rust resistant, and it's weaker. Carbon steel, it's stronger, but it's not rust resistant. So, if you cut a lot of stuff like jugs and water and stuff like that, and you find a pretty good stainless steel sword, not a katana. I remind you, not a katana. Because if you find a stainless steel katana, those things are horrible. I had one of those things. I mean, even something as light as cardboard, I chopped on it with one of those stainless steel katanas. thing just broke in half. I mean, it just snapped right at the tang. This thing, it doesn't have that same fault because it was cast with one piece of 420 stainless steel. Which, 420 stainless steel or or whatever it's called, Japanese A8 or something like that. I mean, they're the same kind of steel they use in the cold steel, folding knives and stuff like that, and, you know, it, they're, they're not, it's not, I mean, stainless steel isn't as bad as what you've heard. I mean, it'll last you a while, it'll get the job done, and, you know, it, 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 it's good, all right? But getting back to the point, I'll do some more tests later on and everything else, but... Steel, as I said, if you see a sword like this, the stainless steel one, and you want it, get it, okay? It's my first sword, I used it, I've been using it, I mean, it hasn't failed me, and that's it.